As we meet here today in Brussels, um, those who bet against NATO have clearly been proven wrong. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken on Wednesday reaffirmed the U.S. and NATO's commitment to supporting Ukraine in its war against Russia. Even as we're supporting Ukraine's fight today, we are helping them build a military that is capable of deterring and defending against aggression far into the future. The supplemental budget request the president made uh, is a demonstration of our own commitment uh, to that goal, and we're looking to Congress to approve it in the coming weeks. Blinken speaking from NATO headquarters while attending a NATO foreign ministers meeting. While talks continue to extend the pause in fighting between Israel and U.S.-designated terrorist group Hamas, this from the United Nations. We must be united in demanding an end to the occupation and the blockade of Gaza. It is long past time to move in a determined, irreversible way towards a two-state solution on the basis of United Nations resolutions and international law. Director General of the U.N. Office in Geneva, Tatiana Valovaya. The Emirati president-designate for the upcoming United Nations COP28 climate talks denied a report alleging his nation planned to use the summit to strike oil and gas deals. These allegations are false, not true, incorrect, are not accurate. And it's an attempt to undermine the work of the COP28 presidency. Sultan al-Jabbar, who also leads the massive state-run Abu Dhabi oil company, in a news release on his behalf, he said he was willing to step down as CEO there. This is VOA News. Hundreds of Catholic institutions around the globe have announced plans to divest their finances of oil, gas, and coal to help fight climate change. However, in the United States, Reuters correspondent Rachel Graham reports not a single diocese shows signs of relinquishing their fossil fuel assets. Since Pope Francis published his landmark letter to bishops urging a break with fossil fuels in 2015, Catholic institutions around the globe have announced plans to divest their finances of oil, gas and coal to help fight climate change. The exception is the world's top oil and gas producer, the United States, which counts about a quarter of its population as Catholic. Not a single U.S. diocese has presented plans to let go of its fossil fuel assets. Its diocese hold millions of dollars of stock in fossil fuel companies through portfolios intended to fund church operations and pay clergy salaries. Reuters correspondent Rachel Gramu says at least a dozen U.S. dioceses are also leasing land to drillers, according to land records. Acrobats, jugglers, and a clown demonstrated their skills for Pope Francis on Wednesday as part of his weekly audience. The Pope sounded wheezy and limited his speaking at the public event a day after he canceled his trip to the COP28 climate summit because of health issues. His aide read his main text in his place, which was followed by a brief show by circus artists, including a clown and acrobats and jugglers. He thanked them for offering a moment of joy, and people in line to attend the audience said they hope he gets better soon. I hope and wish him a speedy recovery. Obviously, his health is uh, most important, and hopefully he can get back soon to to leading and to getting back to work. Madagascar's army warned on Wednesday against any attempt to destabilize the country after the island's top prosecutor announced that two officers had been charged with inciting rebellion before the November 16th presidential election. Ten out of 12 opposition candidates boycotted the vote following weeks of violent street protests. The Electoral Commission declared the incumbent Andre Rajoelina, the winner, and the Constitutional Court is due to certify the results of that election on Friday.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.